Okay, we're looking at the Unit 4 activity, Function Stories. And so um, the main thing here, it says identify the function type. So is this linear? Is it quadratic? Is it exponential growth? Is it exponential decay? So you want to say that first. That's the function type. And then it says describe a relationship that could be modeled by the function represented by the graph. So you're thinking of a real-world example. You can look online for examples. You can think about from your unit what examples they gave you. Um, but you want to look at what's going on here. So something is starting at 3. It's starting at 0, 3. And then from there, it's decreasing, decreasing, and then it has this asymptote at 0. So you're going to try to think of something that starts at 3 that is decreasing like this. And notice these numbers down here. It's decreasing pretty much towards 1 on the x. Um, so this can be time down here, years, something like that. Okay, and this can be an amount of something. A lot of times they talk about um, substances decaying. So this would be the amount of substance, and this would be the time. Okay, so stuff like that. Um, you won't use this example, so it's fine to see it. Now it says identify and interpret the key features of the function in the context of the situation, okay? So like I said, you're going to say, whatever your situation is, you're going to say, you know, at zero years, it had three, um, you know, three grams of something. And then you're going to, so you're going to talk about that, the key features, so y-intercept, um, if it's decaying or growing, decreasing, increasing, and um, you're going to talk about those key features there, including the asymptote and what it means in your situation. Now, um, here's going to be the same thing. Describe a relationship that can be modeled. Um, and so a real-world relationship where the x's are increasing. Now, these aren't increasing by 1. Look what's happening. If we go 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, you can see that these are all perfect squares, right? 1 squared equals 1, 2 squared equals 4, 3 squared is 9, and so on. And these are increasing by 4. So think of something that when you square it over here, it increases by 4 here, okay? You can come up with whatever example you want. Um, and then, um, once again, identify and interpret the key features. Okay. Um, here it talks about the domain and the range. Um, same thing here. So this is going to be a cubic function since there's a 3 up here. You're going to try to, you can look at, once again, something online that's a cubic function. You want to graph this to see what it looks like. Okay. Um, and same thing here. You're going to look at the key features of the graph. Maybe the y-intercept, if there's x-intercepts, stuff like that. Uh, maybe the vertex. Um, and describe in your situation that you came up with what that means. Okay, same thing here. This is a piecewise function, but what's happening? And what could this graph, graph uh, represent? Um, a lot of people choose roller coaster. I'll just tell you that right now, so you can use that as your example. And then, same exact thing, identify and interpret key features. So here's a polynomial function. It's asking you to describe the function. So you're going to say it's polynomial. You're going to say, what degree is it in? Whenever it ends up here, or sorry, it starts here and ends in the opposite direction, we know it's going to be some sort of odd function. This, How many directions does this have? One, two, three. So it's going to be a degree of three because it goes in three different directions. Okay. Um, now for this one, standard form, um, you, know, you can look through your unit or online for the standard form of that function. Okay, now you are right about the zeros of this function. But for here, um, to find the linear factors, this is going to be something um, where there are three points, okay, an x, y point. So now when you have a zero of negative 20, that means that at, uh, so, or I'm sorry, um, the factors is going to be represented as x minus or plus something. And you always just change the sign, so this one would be x plus 20. And then you can figure out those two based on that. Now once you have those three factors up in part D, um, x minus something or x plus something, um, after you have all three of those, then it says to write an equation 
where a is your leading coefficient and use the factors, express it as a product of the leading coefficient and the expanded form of the equation in standard form. And so what you're going to do is you're going to put f of x equals a times, and then you're going to multiply those three fa fractions together up here. So a times, and then once you multiply those three um, factors, you'll leave a at the beginning and have this big old long expression over here. Now here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to have f of x equals a times whatever you have from the other part. Now it says use the y-intercept, which if you look back at this graph, that y-intercept is 1. And so instead of f of x, you're going to have, um, which is, you know, f of x is the same as y. So if we're using the y-intercept of 0, 1, 0, 1 is our intercept, we're going to have 1 equals, and then we're going to have our whole big old um, equation from up here, including a, but for all the x's, we're going to change that to 0 because the y-intercept is 0, 1. So 0 for the x, 1 for the y. So we're going to have 1 equals, and then you plug in zeros for all the x's. Now the only variable you have left is a. Um, so once you only have a as your variable, all you got to do is some arithmetic um, to figure out what a is. Now the very last part is g, where we're going to plug in a and um, then we're going to keep the x's that we had. So um, it's going to be f of x equals, now you're going to have a here, whatever you find that a is, a times, now it's going to be that whole long expression with the x's that you had in the previous part, right before you put the zeros in for the x's. So it's going to be a times that big old thing, and then you're going to multiply a through. You're going to do, four, you're going to do um, distributing a to all of those x's, and then you will have... Um, your final equation. Or actually, you know what, you can just leave a at the beginning. You don't need to actually distribute it. So the f of x equals whatever you found for a, and then your equation with all the x's from your previous part. Now for this one, when it says to choose a scenario and create a question, um, you chose this one, a radioactive substance with a mass of 64 grams creates uh, decays at a rate of 25% every hour. So here's the function. So your question is going to be something like um, what, or uh, something like after how many hours is the mass going to be five, okay? So you're going to have to pick a question where you give the time, um, I'm sorry, so that you, you give the mass, you want to give the ending mass, and you want to be figuring out the time. So how long will it take for the mass to be five, for the mass to be ten, for the mass to be fifteen, or something like that. So that's what your question will be like. So once you have your question, um, you'll just be kind of figuring out the rest of this. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, okay, yep, all this is pretty much the same, um, but it just depends on your specific uh, question that you asked.